All right, we're in. I'll just reset my time, so we're good. Okay, perfect. So, very nice to meet you all. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. We're very happy to be at the Open Source Summit. It's a first for me. It's the second experience for Carl. And we're um, yeah, very excited to present to you the work that Mobility Data is doing, but mostly what the community is doing, which is core to our work. Uh, so first of all, to present myself, I would like to share with you a short story. When I was a teenager, I was in a sport program in high school, and it was, the school was outside of my home city. To get to school, I had to take, on a daily basis, six different modes of transportation. That was a bit crazy. <laughs> to get to school was an hour and a half of car, train, subway, city bus, then school bus, walking, and then train and car again. All of that in just one day, five days a week. It was a bit exhausting, and anything, everything was, uh, nothing was seamless, nor digitized. So it was a, a big challenge, but we were in 2005. Um, that experience differently influenced me in uh, who I am today. Um, and since 2019, I'm the Deputy Executive Director at Mobility Data, and we improve transportation through data. Um, and one of my core aspirations is to empower people to get from point A to point B in the most sustainable way for them. And I'm Carl Fretland. Um, I have a similar backstory with uh, being a young, young person trying to make sense of, of transportation. Um, and on my side, it was in, uh, when I was in high school, I would uh, cut class and uh, go down to Chicago. I'm from Toronto, Wisconsin. And, and one of the things that we realized really quickly when we were down there is, hey, you can go on Google Maps and see how to get around using the train. And so that, that was something I was like, hey, that's really cool. How can we get that in our city? And so that's where I first got involved in open standards without knowing what a standard is or what, what an open ecosystem was. Um, and, and here we are. Uh, nearly uh, 15 or 20 years later, uh, working on, on the standards themselves. So uh, a little bit about our team and our organization. This is our wonderful people that we get to work with every day. Um, so we work for an a international organization uh, called Mobility Data. We're a bit both of a foundation and a maintainer of several different projects. Um, key aspects is like we're an international organization, we're nonprofit, we're membership based, we have members from all over the world. Um, really importantly is our, our focus on traveler information. So having this one goal of everything, every project we take on, we're trying to make the travel uh, experience better for, for the traveling public. We do that through open standards. Um, and our organization was founded around GTFS, which we'll speak a lot about today, which is the largest um, standard in place for public transportation information. Um, but we don't want to be married to that one solution. Um, so we work with other standards, we involve ourselves in different projects, in different depths in the space, um, based on uh, yeah, what, what, where we think we can have the most impact. Okay, so now you know a little bit more about us, but we also want to know a little bit more about you. Quick survey. Please don't be shy, raise your hand. Um, who uses public transportation or bike share system? Almost everyone. Almost everyone, this is great. Uh, um, who use um, Google Maps to get around? Who use Apple Plan, Transit? Um, yeah, what, what other apps do people use? Stream app, nice. Cool. And how many of you use a travel app to get to the convention center? Great. So see, this is something that is part of our daily life. So everything we're presenting you today, it's in your phone, it's in your day-to-day. -day, and I think that's why we're so excited to share it with you. All right, so what, I mean, I realized that I'm talking to a, a standards audience at an open source conference, but in our space, we had the experience that sort of talking about open standards, what do we mean here? Um, and it was important that especially the public sector had something to point to, to say, this is what we're talking about. And so a number of um, uh, like 
higher level public sector entities got together to say, we need to create a, a set of guidelines about what are open standards if we're gonna be asking to use them. Um, and with that was born the mobility data interoperability principles. And this project was really spearheaded by the state of California, but a lot of other states, um, even national entities have been, have been part of this project. And it's defining a set of criteria for um, what is this whole <coughs> standards interoperability space. Um, so the project had these public sector co-authors. They've gotten the industry who they work with to sign off on it. So the companies that sell uh, technology product, products to transportation sector uh, in, the, in the government sector. Um, they've endorsed this saying, yes, we're in agreement that this is the way we want to do business and want to work together. And we, we've currently recently taken on a management role um, of hosting this, these principles. The core open standards definition in these is really um, talking about that standards need to be free to use, they need to be publicly documented, um, maintained by an independent organization, uh, have structured releases, and have an open uh, community of contributors where people can, can take part in them. And contributors are not only technical people, we'll get to that. And then what is traveler information? The other side of what we're talking about, and, and I think we touched on it with, with the poll, poll we did, it's, it's every piece of information that you use to figure out how to get around in your daily. But it's, it's, it's not just pulling up Apple Maps and seeing, seeing that there's a, a Lime bike or a, a bus outside. It's also a growing variety of applications. So we have <coughs> Amazon Alexa that you can ask um, it, if the subway is running that day in, in major cities. You have um, really every major tech company um, has some sort of application that is delivering um, information to, to end consumers um, using open transportation standards. And, and one of my favorites is, is in the top, um, the top here is uh, the elevator in the building that I work in has actually, it's consuming a GTFS data from the ferry boat that stops downstairs to tell you when you're in the elevator if the boat is on time so you know if you have to run or not. And, and like, there's just like all these things that we never would have thought when, when an open ecosystem started that people would come up with. And that's kind of the beauty of, of open standards is that it really allows for, for all sorts of things. Also this fun eight bit clock that, that tells you if there's bike share bikes available. There's a lot of, a lot of um, just innovation that happens uh, around the open standards. Again, importantly, um, we really focus our efforts with the end goal of, of improving the traveler information and, and thinking about the traveler use case. There's a lot of other uses of data in transportation. It's a very data heavy space um, where, you know, bus companies are figuring out data for operations, for service planning. All those things are important and it's important that that data is in interoperable open standards but it's secondary to our main goal, which is telling people what their options are and, and, and where, where they are. The community. Without the community, that work wouldn't happen uh, the way it is right now. So standards rely on contributors, uh, contributions rely on a community, and contributions comes in many shapes and forms. It doesn't have to be only technical people. And GTFS is uh, sustained by a community of very diverse people. Uh, um, some standards are led by uh, government, uh, governmental bodies uh, that report to policymaker, to institutional entities. Um, others are also driven by private sector. Others have a paywall, uh, even though they, they're calling themselves open standard. Uh, others like GTFS and GBFS are managed by third parties like Mobility Data, and we're an international nonprofit organization, um, and we work only on open source projects. Who constitute the community? Um, in our case, uh, our community is mostly transit agencies, uh, software vendors, government, no other nonprofit organizations from everywhere in the world. Uh, we also have our members. More than 120 of them are participating and supporting our work 
uh, underwriting the standards work and actively participate in our initiatives. How do we bring them together? That is a great challenge. Um, we are in a fortunate position of sitting in the middle of that great community and great group uh, and to lower, lower the barrier uh, of entry for those contributions, uh, we have various strategies. Here are some of them. Uh, we run users' interviews, we host monthly meetings, we host in-person workshops, we also have direct one-on-one -on -one email uh, calls uh, at various times of the day. Obviously, we take more, the majority of the team is on the East Coast in North America, which means that we're having sometimes meetings very late in the night or very early in the morning to accommodate different time zones, recreate how-to guides, and we also have many online platforms such as GitHub, Slack, Google Groups. Again, we try to be as inclusive as possible of every type of stakeholders, which is not only technical people. And I'm saying that very, uh, also that a couple of times because I'm not a technical person, but I'm contributing to that work and that is very crit critical. Um, we do also, uh, so I'll give you a very quick example. Uh, we have a community manager, Elias, here in the room, um, who is gathering the needs of everyone, uh, hosting meeting, and we recently, we had um, an issue that we wanted to work on, representing fares in your phone, in your, in your uh, trip planning application. Uh, and we, this issue was open for more than 11 years. 11 years. <laughs> And we put in a process around that to accelerate the work and have a, a consensus. And we, we gathered everyone together for a couple of months. We hosted monthly meetings and applied all the various strategies that we presented. And we managed to close 11 years of work, in just a couple of months. So thanks to the community management role, very important to accelerate the work. sort of our, the biggest area of our work, which is around public transportation, um, and specifically on the GTFS specification, um, which is representing all of the public facing elements of transit systems. So things like, where, when is the bus coming? What are the routes? Um, where is the vehicle right now? Is it, you know, five minutes away if it's late, or is it just not coming at all? Um, so those pieces of information are, are the types of things that are represented in, in GTFS. And then there's some supporting specifications emerging around things like the GPS system on the bus and how that might inter, interoperate with other systems in order to tell you um, that the bus is late or where it is. Um, and right now there's about 10,000 different transit agencies around the world using GTFS. So that's 10,000 times uh, uh, Sound Transit and King County Metro um, all over the world. So it's, it's the main standard in use in North America, in Europe, South America, um, much of East Asia, and really I think the only place that, that we haven't seen GTFS become the de facto um, standard is in China. Um, so it's, it's really broadly, broadly in use. And uh, there's some other regional specifications, the biggest of which we're going to talk about a bit is um, Transmodel, um, of which NetX is a part, and this is a European standard that is run through um, SEN, which is the European standards body. Um, it has deeper functionality, um, but the standard is not fully open according to the de definition that we spoke about earlier. Um, this is a slide that we prepared together with our, um, our partners in Europe who work on the Transmodel um, suite of specifications. It's a lot of information. The, thing, the main thing to understand here is that there's all these different pieces of functionality that we're trying to achieve in the transportation world. And so all of these things require standards and there's different approaches of sort of the, the Transmodel approach is creating something that is extremely thorough and can, can do all of this um, with a very limited number of specifications. It's technically, it's, it's amazing. The level of detail that can be achieved with it is really, really high, but that comes at a pretty high trade-off of usability. 
And what we've seen is that in Europe, there's a movement to move towards that um, specification at the same time in almost every major European city, what people are still doing is pulling up uh, you know, Google Maps and, and friends on their phone and seeing uh, data that's coming through, through GTFS or, or GBFS for, for bike share. Speaking of bike share, um, Mobility Data is also hosting and managing the GBFS standard, which stands for uh, any, any bike share system, but also any shared mobility. In the shared mobility family, we have bike share, scooter share, car share, anything that is uh, being dri driven by the person but is shared with other people. Um, what does GBFS include? It's including the description of the system in real time. Uh, it includes different modes of, modes of transportation, as I was, uh, as I was saying. What type of information can be shared in GBFS? Think about anything you would like to know about the bike that you want to rent for um, riding to your destination. You want to know where is the bike? What is the autonomy of the battery? Is there a second seat? Is there um, a zone that is restricted to the use of the, of the bike? Is there any um, specific regulation such as speed limit that I need to know? Do I need to wear a helmet? Anything that a traveler and a user of the, of the bike uh, would like to know can be described in GBFS. Um, the coverage of the usage. So GBFS is much younger uh, than GTFS. It's celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. Um, so it's a young specification, but in the last years, as we've been uh, stewarding the work and working very hard with the community um, to accelerate the coverage of usage of GBFS. It is now used in more than 900 systems across the world, and we're looking to be using uh, a thousand of systems this year in more than 40, country, 40 countries and more than 700 cities. And I'll wait here because I have a, something to share about regulation, policy, and bike share, but I'll keep that for a future slide. Sounds good. So um, before we get to that, I think another important thing that our standards community has decided and, and that we as, a, as, a, as an organization have decided that we want to put resources towards supporting is building consensus around what is high quality data. So we're talking about with GTFS and GBFS, very simplistic standards and there's room for interpretation. And especially when you start talking about 10,000 transit agencies around the world, what a, a platform is in one country may have a totally different meaning in another. And, and so as we're improving the documentation, um, we also are, are working on software tools to help ensure data quality. Um, so the, the first part that we've, we've worked on is, is building automated validators to see if the, the standard, the data which is being produced is compliant with the standards. Um, the biggest of the validators, again, is the GTFS schedule validator, so the like, static data around, around um, GTFS. It's in use, um, are the, oh, so we've uh, hosted an open source version of the validator and, um, and are actively developing on that, and that validator is currently being used by around 40 organizations that we know of, including Google Maps, uh, MoveIt, which is owned by IBM, uh, but also transit agencies like the Chicago Transit a a Authority, uh, AMB in Barcelona, the Transit Authority is also using this validator. And with that, they can see, are we, are we all doing this the same way? Um, and it's, it's really important to be able to, to establish uh, that the data is usable. And we have uh, also validators for GTFS real-time, so the live information, and for GBFS bike share information. The other big tool, suite of tools that we're um, maintaining are around data sharing. So we have databases um, of open data sets. Most of the data that we're talking about here, or a good portion of it, is being released as open data. And as we talk about policy, you'll see that there's a movement to push even more in the direction of the data being released as open data. Um, and we want to help make that discoverable, but also um, uh, create a platform where different stakeholders can collaborate around 
data quality and make and make uh, improvements on on it together. All right, policy side. Um, policy requirements uh, evolve in time and can be very powerful. We have some examples listed here on the slides, uh, from Mexico to Switzerland to Japan and Europe, uh, to only name those. At Mobility Data, uh, we're supporting some, uh, some of those efforts by doing also some policy work, advocacy work, uh, working with other uh, nonprofit organizations, governmental entities, because uh, we all believe that it's a gr great way to make sure that travelers and riders get the right information. And we do it at the, uh, those efforts at different levels, local authorities, municipalities, states, countries. Um, and all of the cases, you know, uh, these approach have all different, um, sorry, all these cases have different approach to standardize data and, re and regulate it. Um, but they all agree that open standards is the way to go. Some examples uh, uh, in Europe. We all know that Europe is uh, making great shifts in the regulation of open standards. They uh, also requiring uh, Europe-wide standardization, uh, um, and they also want to decentralize the implementation of uh, those standards. They have some standards that they are accepting, uh, uh, but they're still at the moment defining which one is accepted or not in their pure definition of standards. Uh, but again, Europe is a really high um, uh, ally on the GTFS and GBFS standards. In Switzerland, Switzerland, they want to create a program uh, for national GBFS, uh, which means that they have a regulation saying if you're operating uh, a bike share system, you need to produce GBFS. This is part of the requirement. The US DOT, uh, so FTA, the Federal Transit Administration, they are now requiring GTFS for any transit agencies receiving funding starting 2024. This is very powerful. Before, only 30% of them were uh, creating GTFS, uh, and we're expecting them to be about 70% by the end of the year. That's a huge shift. There's thousands of agencies in the US. And if they want to receive funding, you must create GTFS. Uh, and again, the community is there to support them in that achievement. And finally, a bit closer to the West Coast, in California, they uh, have an open standard requirement for any tech procurement. And they're doing tons of initi initiatives uh, to have open standards. And we're, uh, the community is really supporting that to also make this as international as possible. Yes, I think you can see, like, while we're a relatively young organization, this stuff is, is pretty broadly adopted already. And, and we just came in place to, to facilitate um, the organization and, and the growth of it. And, and of what do we see as the trends in the transit um, data standardization world? Data quality is a huge theme. So there's more, more and more interest in, okay, now we have the data, but is it giving you know, the best user experience and really coming back to that? How is this, how is this useful to the public? Um, that's, that's gonna be a huge theme over the coming years. Um, adoption, as Elizabeth just talked about with, with especially smaller and smaller systems. Um, in addition to, to those examples in, in North America, also the transportation ministry in Japan has a very large program um, to try and get all of the smaller transportation providers producing GTFS so that there's uh, universal um, travel information in rural areas. Um, beyond that, I think the other idea is there's going to be more areas of standardization. So both deeper within the current, current modes of transportation, but also expanding to new modes of transportation. There's a, a development just in the last couple of weeks where we passed, a, the community passed an extension to GTFS in order to um, represent uh, demand responsive transportation. So um, now there's a lot of app-based services where in a very suburban area, you might, you might use an app to pull up um, options for uh, like a van that will pick you up and bring you door to door, door to door. And that can now be represented in open standards and then through that get into all of the different application, consumer facing applications. Beyond all that, 
is this growing collaboration. So, so as we've come in as a, as a standard steward, we've been doing a lot of work to try and bring and bridge communities together. So there's strong um, open development communities in Japan, in several European countries, in North America and South America, um, and in many other places. And we're trying to bring those together. Um, we're hosting our second international summit this fall where we're making an effort to bring people together from around the world. I think this is the second presentation where we had a picture in a row of people sitting together in a room uh, talking about this stuff on a sunny day as we are here, which is, is wonderful. And, and it, 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 it's, it's, it's the hard work that, that makes this stuff people stuff. Um, and yeah, this is sort of how we, we uh, share news out to our community on a regular basis on, on what the latest is. Now we're opening the floor to any questions. Uh, don't hesitate, we're, we're pretty kind. Uh, happy, yes, one question here. Go back to the slide that you have, like the, if you just go back to the slide, there's a one you have a different standard that cover different domain, yeah, this one. Um, so maybe I didn't just hear clearly. Do you mention that we are uh, moving towards more uh, the trans model, the, the, the big model, but just in the process of going there? Or we are talking about there's a benefit of using the smaller like GTFS right now. There's a different trade off. I just want to learn that part more. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So the question is, um, are we moving towards using the more centralized trans model group of standards rather than the more use specific uh, GTFS standards? I think I think that's what we're that's what the community is figuring out right now. So there's. Yeah, especially in Europe, this is the so trans model is a, a European program, and there's a few a few um, overseas implementations, but the vast majority is in Europe. Um, and the there's very early implementation. So of the countries in Europe, so far, Norway and Italy is pretty far along. Those two countries have really adopted, and the rest are kind of figuring out where does this fall, how can we take what's already, because GTFS and GPFS are pretty much already universally adopted across Europe, how can we take that and leverage that work so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel in order to have some of this deeper depth of information. And we're working closely with, with um, IT4PT, which is a European Union-backed um, organization that's, that's the steward of, of Transmodel to create some mappings and other tools to help interoperability. Um, but that's the big question, and, and especially for, for GBFS where um, the adoption is, is very, very far, um, and those, that, that space is a lot more fragmented. There's a lot more um, small operators and a lot of international operators. They're really questioning is that is it maybe good enough to have GBFS? So there's a, a deeper level of information. You can see there's a few missing. If you look at the, the blue and purple circles, there's a few areas that are missing. So some things around you know operations execution. This is the big a big piece that's missing. But there's also within each area some very detailed use cases. I think about on the, the public transit side, um, we work closely with the uh, Norwegian um, Transportation Ministry and they give us an example that um, there's, in some rural places in Norway, there's a ferry boat and in order for the ferry boat to stop, you have to press a button that sounds a siren <laughs> and GTFS cannot represent that, but Transmodel can. So that's <laughs> the level of granularity that they, that they get down to. And one of our job is to, uh, you know, like we have MOU, a mem memorandum of understanding. We're working we're like in partnership agreement with those organizations. Uh, so for Transmodel, it's mostly with Europe, but we do the same in Japan with the Ministry of Transport. Um, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. There's already good practices elsewhere in the world, and our job is to represent what the community wants. Uh, and when we hear them saying, "Okay, we need." operational data to be represented in a format that is as 
user-friendly as possible. GTFS is a much user-friendly standard to use than Transmodel that is more complex, more rich, more detailed, uh, but it's a bit more, um, you know, it's kind of a, um, uh, not terrifying, it's, what's the word I can say? <laughs> I, I mean, I think the word that came out might be the one that people, <laughs> it's, it's daunting. It is, it is very, very complex. Um, yeah. And the other side of that, the other question there is also the documentation, like there, there's questions around the openness of that, that standard and, and the ease of, of use, especially for, for smaller stakeholders. Uh, so you talked about your relationships with like uh, governmental entities and transportation providers and so on. And I'm wondering, uh, do you have interfaces with any, any other standards organizations, using the term loosely, uh, that are not in either of those two categories? And if so, can you talk about those? So for example, I could imagine like in trip planning, things like uh, weather data would be very interesting. Um, things like uh, major event planning and you know news, things like that could be interesting. And those might be other parallel organizations. Do you have relationships now? Or are you looking at anything? I don't think we have any deep relationships. We do, we are trying to collaborate more with other standards organizations to learn from each other. And this, this week being here at Open Source Summit, there's a lot of collaboration um, going on, but specific on the specific content, uh, not really. You um, mentioned that GBFS is 10 years old and then you called it quite young. And I think that that's sort of an interesting point because that's true. At an open source conference, a young project is one that's maybe like six months old, you know. <laughs> um, can you maybe speak to how you've like been fostering this community over a decade now and how you've managed to pull a community of non-technologists um, or people who wouldn't necessarily identify as technologists mm -hmm. into a public standards project. I think that every time that one of those standards of GTFS or GBFS was created, it was you know, like a, a grassroots initiative. So coming from a transit authorities that wanted to represent traveler information. And they started with that as a very small local project. Same for GBFS, it was a volunteer of an organization that was believing in the idea of standardizing the information of a uh, bike share system. And then it became you know, a bit bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was at one point where the local authorities or the volunteer couldn't support it anymore because it was too big for them. And this is where having a neutral or a third party like mobility data uh, fostering and being the facilitator in the community makes sense for them. Also because we came with the hat of being an international organization. So with the ambition of expanding the reach of those standards and making sure that we're gathering as, inter as much as possible the international perspective on the work we're doing. Yeah. Um, so that's how we, the project was created from something very small and then becoming bigger. And indeed, GTFS is now 20 years old, G GBFS 10 years old, but the last years were the one where because it, it, it was now detached to, a third, it was you know, attached to a third party and does not belong only to um, the community on a voluntary base. Um, now we can allow resources to accelerate the improvement of those standards. Maybe I'm half answering your question. I think maybe to add to that, the, the other thing that's unique about this space is we're talking about public goods. And because we're talking about public goods, the case for the whole ecosystem to, to be open was very strong early on. Um, and with that, and they're, they're frankly, frankly, it also comes down to a lot of individual champions. Um, you know, we have people both, both on the, the public sector side who work for transit agencies, people on, uh, at big tech places like Google and Apple, um, and also on the bike share side, that's, that industry is very, very much more a VC industry. We all saw the like huge uptick of, of e-scooters back uh, 2019. Um, within all of those very different spaces, it's, it's taken individuals to say, maybe competing on the, the accuracy, quality, depth of information isn't where we wanna compete with each other, it's where we need to work together. Um, because our bigger competitor is other modes of transportation or people not, you know, being able to take trips. 
but I think it's a very interesting use case of a, a project that became big enough and credible enough in the whole community that is now required by the federal government in US, by Switzerland uh, government in Japan, that all the big tech companies are using them. So it's, it really reached that level, and I think this is, it's, and it's just the beginning. So it's very exciting. Do I have one question here? Here I use the uh, Orca card to, to travel by transportation, like uh, public bus and the train. So does this uh, open standard transportation allows or facilitate to use the same card, say I go to London, so, so that I can use the same card? This is a question. Mm -hmm. Great question. So the question is here in Seattle, there's transit agency issues, a uh, specific payment ca card called the Orca card. Um, and the question is, how my open standards let us use that card if we travel to London? This is a big question in our <laughs> space right now, is around, around, um, around how much should we try and solve payment interoperability, um, ticketing interoperability, and how much should we um, let the payment space try and solve that, uh, and, and on our side, just try and do the information. So, so far, what, what's happened recently in GTFS is that we've added, um, the community added, uh, updated the fares information that can be represented. One of the things that can now be represented is that you can tap to pay um, with a credit card. So Apple Maps is now showing in every city when you get to the city, if, if you're able just to tap your credit card on that bus or train, they're telling you. Um, and, and, and others are certainly following suit. Um, so that firstly is just telling people where they already don't have to buy a special card, that they don't have to buy a special card. Then figuring out, okay, what about cases where there's also a discount entitlement, say for senior citizens? Um, so we're working, the state of California has really interesting projects in this space to work on open identity information and link that then to the open payment cards so that if you're a senior citizen in California, you can link your driver's license to your credit card um, for the purpose of getting that discount when you tap your card on the bus. Um, going deeper into interoperability between payment systems, it's something we're exploring. There's a lot of projects going on in Europe. Um, we were, we're following closely uh, the TOMP API, which I mentioned very briefly, um, which is an open API standard for exchange of ticketing information. So that potentially would be a, a solution to allow interoperability. Yes, so in back to 2015, there were a group of people doing kind of a workshop around how to improve and accelerate GTFS because it was already getting bigger. And that group of people um, worked on a project of best practices. What are the best practices to produce a GTFS feed? And once that project was, was ending, there was a, the community uh, raised their voice by saying, hey, we need to have a full organization managing that standard. It cannot stay only within the community. It is for the community but being managed by the contributors, it's not sustainable if we have the ambition of being a worldwide adopted standard. Um, out of that, uh, one of those persons um, uh, accepted the challenge to create a nonprofit in Canada, and this is how we started. And it's been uh, four years and a half now. And our team has grown from one person to 22 person in uh, three different countries. So we are um, definitely out, out, out time. Uh, it's lunchtime. I'm sure folks are hungry. I want to say thank you to Carl and Elizabeth for the wonderful presentation and hope to see everyone back in our track um, to talk at two about how um, uh, liaisons and industry alliances empower standardization. So thank you. Thank you.